Hey everybody, you're old Cloud9 here, and uh, today I'm going to be building the Bren Gun Messer Spit. Um, I did do an inbox review of this one. I got this from Rob at Basic Modeling. Um, thanks again, Rob. I really do appreciate it. Uh, he built this, posted it on line, and I got really excited because this is a really cool um, Spitfire. Um, the reason why I really got excited about it is because I collect. 70 second scale Spitfires and I promised that uh, when I did this model at the end I would show off my 70 second scale collection so this is a really really fantastic model what this is is a Spitfire with a Daimler Benz engine in it the engine they used in the Mi 109 so it's the Messer Spit and um, I actually have a article about it here. I'll show you. Uh, if I can, oh, cool. Opened right up to it. So Rosarius uh, Zirkus was a pilot, and in I believe the 1930s, he was commissioned to um, um, to test um, Allied aircraft and see how they compared to German aircraft. And during the war, he was in charge of this big kind of program of um, restoring like B-17s, Spitfires, Hurricanes, any Allied aircraft you can think of, into restoring them into flying condition. And um, it's actually a big collection my dad has because he's built so many German aircraft. He decided to uh, to do that to just build all these. Um, it was called the Rosarius Flying Zirkus. Um, and so that's what my dad actually decided to build. So the reason why this one came to be... Now, as far as I can remember, this Spitfire... Uh, I think the pilot got lost, if I remember correctly here. Um, do, 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 do. No, I can't remember. Anyways, I think I think he ran out of fuel or he was lost and he landed the plane perfectly. The pilot was captured and they brought this. This is a Mark V um, Spitfire. And um, the the big thing was, which is the better aircraft? You know, that's been going on since the Battle of Britain. Was it the Spitfire or the Mi-109? And um, so he decided to put this Daimler-Benz engine in here. I believe the cowling came from a uh, Mi 110, which they use the same engine, but the cowling is a little bit bigger. And um, basically, it performed exactly like a Spitfire, and uh, there was nothing really different about it. Um, there's a couple, you know, little things to pick up on in the kit here. Um, there is an error in the in the kit, and uh, Rob noticed it as well, and so. Uh, he kind of reminded me about it, but I, I, it was something I noticed in the picture here. Um, the the kit comes with the wrong uh, canopy. It's uh, on the box here. It's the rounded one, but it's supposed to be the straight edge. So I actually have a spare one here. So I'm going to replace this uh, for the straighter version. And I'll just take a quick look at the kit. This is originally built by AZ Models. And Bren Gun is uh, out of the Czech Republic, I think. Where might they be? Yep, yeah, Czech Republic. Okay. And they make some pretty cool models, I gotta say. Quite impressed. This is the first time I've ever built a Bren Gun model. And actually, the first time I've ever seen one. Okay. My apologies for this clear plastic. I know it crinkles like a maddening siren in your ear, especially when you have headphones on, so I apologize for that. I, I hate that. You can't really avoid it. Um, so here's the Messer Spit. Looks pretty good. Quite happy with this. And you get a, another Spitfire. Uh-oh, somebody wants to visit me. Hold on. Right back. What are you doing? What are you doing? 
Hey, you. Come here. Where are you? Come here. Say hi. Say hi. Hello. She wants to come in. Yes, hello, beautiful. Okay. Uh, I think she'll let me finish this here. So, you you get this... You basically get the, the Spitfire. The whole kit. So here's a Mark V. And then you just kind of add on some of the other parts on here. Uh, which is pretty nice. It's molded in this weird kind of brown plastic. So I'm curious to see how this is, holds up. But what's really awesome is there's tons of spare parts. No, you just were out. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love you. I love you. So I got a whole bunch of awesome Spitfire parts that I can use for other builds and stuff. Like here's a Volks dust filter. There's a bit of flash on the parts, but it's not terrible. Um, like this is this is a bad part though. This one's horribly mutilated. Might just toss that one. Uh, we get some decals. They do come with swastikas and some photo etch metal. I don't think I'm going to use it. I think I'll save that for something else. And then there's the canopy. Um, there is one unfortunate problem with the mold here, and. Uh, it is that the panel lines on this fuselage are just, they're just gone. Like they're basically flat. So what I'm going to do, and this is the part that's going to take me forever. You gotta wait just two seconds, girl. Okay? I'll finish this and then you go out. Okay? Okay. So what I'm going to do is like, this one's perfect. Panel lines, everything is ready to go. So what I'm going to do is cut it off right here, cut this cowling off, and then cut the cowling off on the messer spit. Because it's weird, because from like here to here where this line is, this is all like perfect. But it's the rest of it, all the panel lines are gone. It's way too much work to just rescribe them all. You gotta be quiet, girl. And um, so, yeah, that's what I'm gonna go do. I'm gonna go let this dog out and start scribing. Alright, like I thought it was going to take me a little while to do it, but uh, as you can see here, I cleaned them all off. And these are the older ones. I'm going to just toss these onto the side. But, um, you know, with just a little bit of work, I'll be able to get the new um, cowling covers on there. Just going to be maybe a little bit of uh, filler. I doubt it, not a lot. It should be basically a pretty good fit. So quite happy with that. So right now I'm going to answer a question that comes up quite a bit and it's do you paint the cockpits um, airbrush or handbrush? Well that depends on what it is. With the Liberator I did that was airbrushing because it was bigger. When it's 70 second scale like this and it's you know just the simple thing usually I'll hand paint it which is what I've done here. The next question I get asked is how do you paint all the details and do you leave them on the sprue? when you do that again that just depends on the model um, like these propeller blades here it's probably easier for me just to airbrush those um, it, again it just depends on the piece you know it and depends on how you want to model that's you know there's no right or wrong answer so to paint the insides I'm gonna use just black uh, I'm not gonna go into all this detail and get, you know because you're not gonna really see it but I'm gonna do it here just to show you guys. So, like here you can see I assembled all the the chair and the you know headrest and all this stuff here. Painted a green, painted it black, it's done. So I'm gonna put this over here to the side. So what I've got here are a couple paint brushes. This is kind of a smaller tipped one. And this one here is a really, really fine tip. It's very, very tiny. Uh, I'm gonna use this one. Because it will it'll work fine for just what I need. And I'm just using Tamiya Flat Black. And uh, you just... Yeah, most of these surfaces are raised. And you just... Paint them. You know, I don't really have any other way to explain it. So, just these boxes here. And don't really care about how, you know, accurate it is. Because, you know... This box might be silver and this thing might be red, but for me personally, like right now, 
it's so tiny once that bubble top goes on there you're not going to see it so I don't worry about it too much in this case so if I had smaller detail I would go ahead and use my tinier brush um, so like it's just some nice detail here I can do for the instrument panel you're supposed to paint the top part black and the rest is green so what I'm going to do here is take some sky gray this is XF19 and uh, just a nice light gray paint and for this I want a wider haired brush and I just want to dab a little bit at the top there and all I'm going to do with this is just uh, dry brush it on here and by dry brushing it it's going to highlight all the dials on the panel and uh, yeah there we go actually looks really nice so that's just a quick way you can add in some detail and you can do the same thing on here you know you could take another kind of color like a, a silver make it you know just dry brush on there and make it have this really nice kind of um, war torn look on there that's been used a bit um, that works pretty well you know you can go ahead and do that and experiment with that if you like but what I like to do I like these Tamiya panel line accent colors I just picked this one up a little while ago this is brown and uh, should have bought the dark brown as well but uh, this light brown I think will be very nice you just you know you shake it pretty thoroughly and uh, I'm gonna do this on the drier one here now this is enamel paint you need to do it on top of an acrylic if you are doing it on top of enamel paint you need to have an acrylic underlay of a clear acrylic like uh, future works really well um, but you need to have several layers on it on here so all I'm going to do is this is pre-thinned and uh, you just paint this all in here and uh, it seeps into all the panel line uh, details and um, you can see here it looks pretty good and I'm just gonna kinda push this around you can also use like an acrylic wash if you really wanted to there's no real right or wrong answer but uh, yeah I like I like to use browns blacks are really nice but black is kind of intense brown is a bit more of a natural color and so yeah just paint it on all over the place and leave it alone and uh, when you come back to it it'll you know it'll dry itself out pretty nicely you might want to add uh, this is the only problem with these things is sometimes you want to add a bit of a darker color onto them because when this stuff dries it does have a tendency to dry pretty lightly but there I can see it's catching in all the all the panel lines and all the recesses and all that and it looks pretty cool so quite happy with how this is turning out and like I said I like to put this stuff everywhere and if you put too much of it on I just take some mineral spirits and wash over it again it kinda gets rid of it so just gonna quickly go over it like this so that's just a quick simple way how to uh, if you want to how to add a little more pizzazz to your um, cockpit again I don't really like doing this as much because once the fusel or the once the canopy goes on it's kinda hard to see anything that was in there so that's just me you know I do it anyways just cuz it's fun it looks pretty good so I think what I'm gonna do now here is let this uh, enamel dry and um, then glue the halves together but this one's already drying and it's pooling in all the panel lines really nicely and it looks pretty cool it'll look even better once it's dried alright so I've actually done quite a bit of work on this um, sorry I just hit my tooth I eh. hate it when I do that um, anyways uh, so yeah you can see I got everything put together here um, lots and lots of cleaning to do on this model it's kind of a nightmare really like this intake here it comes in two pieces and uh, man, that was a lot of sanding and filing and anyways um, quite a big gap in here so I had to fill in all that rescribed it sanded all this down rescribed it and uh, yeah I glued on the, uh, the the ailerons here and notice that uh, they're they're straight 
but the wing isn't. So one end is higher than the other and that's right here I can see it in the plastic. Um, there's no way to get down it. Like I thought I could just maybe press down on it. That's not going to happen. So what I think I'm going to do is either with my hobby knife like this is just take it and just you know basically score it like this until it you know until the plastic gives away or use the uh, scribing saw which will probably actually work a little bit faster but um, yeah then I'll be able to push this down a little bit and hopefully get that to be uh, to be leveled out um, the next thing I did now usually when I build a model kit if it's bad uh, you know fitting or whatever it doesn't really bother me as much. The thing that one of the things that really bothers me a lot on model kits is when the propeller can't spin. I, I don't know, but it, it just seems to me that it seems like it's a rule that if you're building a piston engine aircraft, it should be able to have a propeller that spins. Um, this one doesn't. You basically just glue it onto the nose, and you know they're kind of laughing at you, I guess. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, I don't like that. So I found this piece of styrene rod out of my spare box, spare, spare box bits. There we go. So it's just this green rod here. And this little thing here. I have no idea what it was. But it makes the most perfect stopper. So I just drilled a hole through it. And uh, yeah, check this out. So I can just put all of this up. All of this together. And glue this up. And so... There we go, it'll turn. Now, the only unfortunate thing to this is it means I have to paint this afterwards, which, whatever, that's not going to be too bad. Because um, I'll have at least a propeller that'll, that'll spin and it'll look pretty good. I also think, the other thing I think I'm also going to do is uh, drill this out a little bit more. I've got a rounded file and that's quite simple to do. It'd be nice if I could get it to spin freely. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's kind of where I'm going at right now. Unfortunately, it's not the best model. It's there's there's just so much cleanup work to do. Um, that being said, you know all the the amount of clean work the uh, cleanup work I'm gonna have to do on it. It's not as bad as some other models I've done. It's just you know I was just expecting kind of a quicker model and a bit of a quicker build and stuff like that. So whatever, I'm not upset or you know disappointed with it. Because uh, it's going to be fine in the end, and so that's what I'm going to be doing right now is is trying to get this cowling section on the front here, as well as uh, pushing this down. Because what I would like to do tonight is, if I can, um, airbrush the yellow on. If again, if I can, I'm going to try and get everything set up to uh, to do that. Uh, no promises here. Um, one of the things I wanted to make mention here is I watched Rob's video. He he did the build of this one already, and uh, yeah, I watched it last night. Um, one of the things that he said in here is the canopy doesn't fit, and this is one of the most ridiculous things I've seen here. Um, and I actually test fitted it, and he's right. Um, this this lip down here is too deep. It should be higher up here. On the instructions, they actually tell you to fill it in. I just can't believe that. I've never seen someone, you know, with instructions saying, hey, guess what? This isn't going to fit, so fill it in. It's kind of weird, because usually you see people go and say, you know, they either won't say it, or they would have fixed that in the model before they sent it out to the customer. Not a complaint, just, you know, really weird. I've never, I've never seen that before. The other thing I'm going to do here is, um, like the pitot tube here in the side, I have to, I'm going to make one of these, and the um, antenna on the top here, I'm just going to make that out of styrene, and the only piece of photo ash metal I'm going to use is this uh, cover here that goes under the exhaust. So, yeah, like I said, uh, hopefully the next thing you'll see is airbrushing, if, uh, if I don't run into any other little problems or mishaps <laughs> yeah but it's going pretty well and it's pretty fun you know getting to trying to get everything to fit properly uh, I'm, I'm actually quite enjoying myself 